Hey what's up guys, in this video I'm going to continue the series on jQuery validation by looking at how to perform remote Ajax validation. You'll recall that in the first video where I kind of showed off what jQuery validation can do, I showed you that it can asynchronously check to see whether an account with this email already exists, and if an account with that email does exist, it will show an error and offer for the user to sign back in. Personally, I love this user experience, I've always been a huge fan of this. I remember Google doing it. If you go to google.com and you try and create an account and I'll use my current email address, Google do something very similar. If I try and uh, create an account with an email that I'm already using, it tells us that this email already corresponds to a Google account. I think that's great. In the case of Google, I don't really care because I use my Google accounts a lot, but there have been times where I've gone to a website, tried to make an account, only to realize that I already have an account. I think it's awesome. Furthermore, I really like it when you're choosing a username because I really love to know that the username I want is not available before I get all the way to the bottom and just end up disappointed when the page refreshes. It's really cool. However, this is different to your typical validation. If you don't enter a value into an input, that's simple JavaScript or jQuery, if this element is empty, show an error. But when it comes to validating whether an email is occupied or something like that, you have to talk to the server and the server has to do the heavy lifting. You can't possibly perform this kind of validation on the client. And that's exactly what we do. And that's exactly what Google do. Check this out. If you look at the developer tools and the network tab, if I try and sign up with an email address like programmer, and as soon as I click away from this, look, Google sends a post request to this URL, input validator, and it sends a query string. And if you look at the uh, request body, you can see that it has um, some JSON and it says that the email address I want is programmer. It gets a response that says this is not valid. If I enter an email that probably is available, you can see the response says valid true and it's based off this response for Google show the error message. We can do something extremely similar. We are going to need a server for demonstration purposes. Because I'm already working with JavaScript, and I assume you guys are at least a little bit knowledgeable about JavaScript, I will do this in Node. However, I'm not going to spend too much time explaining Node.js. The only really important thing is, is that when we get a HTTP request, like this one, where we say local, well, we'll say website.com forward slash valid, and we say email is equal to an email, we get this via this rec.url property, request.url. Ultimately, we parse that and store it in this variable. Then what we do is we call this function called if account exists. What this does is it takes an email and it returns true if the email is in this array, otherwise it returns false. Now this is the point that you have to pay attention to if you want to implement this yourself because it's a little bit peculiar. What I do is I check if the account exists, that means that this is not a valid input. I write to the response an empty JSON string. This is a little bit peculiar. It would be more intuitive if you just wrote false jQuery validation just recognizes that an empty JSON string is equal to false. The reason why it works like this is because you could, if you wanted to, specify a custom error message and this will automatically be displayed by the plugin. If the input is valid, you send a JSON string with the value true. Implementing this in the server is super, super simple. Just pay attention to the fact that I'm listening on port 3000. And then when I go to validation, I'll say email, I say Watch this, this is so cool. Remote, and I'll say HTTP localhost 3000, and I will specify no further qualification because I'm not really paying attention to the roots in this very simple server, which by the way is totally contrived and inappropriate for real use. What I'll do is I'll go to my console, and I might have to change up a directory. I think I put this in a folder called tutorial. Oh. I'll run, in fact, I'll use nodemon. I'll say nodemon server.js and run the server. Now watch this. If I go to the document and I start typing in uh, alex at email.com, it says, please fix this field. That's not a good error message. I could go to the server, I believe, and I could add a custom error message like this is a custom error. And I think in this case, it will show that custom error. Yes, it does. And that's the reason, again, why you don't send false, because if you just sent false, it would show the error message false. 
I don't really like doing that. I don't see the point, frankly. What I like to do is I like to go to my messages and it's pretty good that we come back to this because it's been a while since we've looked at it. And I'll say for the remote method, please use this method. And I could say uh, an account with this email already exists. Would you like to sign in? And now when I refresh this and I put in the same email, and it currently seems to exist, would you like to sign in? Just to be unequivocal here, the reason why for the email alex at email.com the error is shown is because it's contained in this array. If I put a value like email.co.uk, which does not exist in the array, then yeah, it works fine. Something pretty cool that I think you guys might appreciate, and I'm going to actually, I don't know how to do this offhand, and that's kind of unprofessional, I know, but I think it's beneficial to see how I explore the documentation. What I would like to do is I'd like to, rather than just saying this email, I'd like to specify specifically that the email that was input is um, already occupied. So I'd rather than say, I'll say alex at email.com is in use, something like that. And apologize for typos, I'm going to remove it so I shan't fix them. I think what you want is there's some kind of method um, if I can find it really quick, then that's great. Ah, it's called validated or format. So what we'll do is we'll say, uh, I think we copy this, and then we'll say the message is equal to, rather than specifying jQuery, we'll just use the shorthand, validated or format um, is already associated with an account. So what this is going to do, what this format static function is going to do, is it's going to replace the placeholder with the value of the input. So it's going to interpolate the actual email here, I think. Let's see if this works. Uh, we'll go here and we'll say alex email.com and it completely failed. Let's have a look at the developer console and it's an ex not expecting a semicolon. I'm very bad at doing that. I, I come from a C-sharp background, so I'm really used to leaning on the IDE. But let's try this out now. And as you can see, it prints Alex email.com is already associated with an account. Sorry if I, you've considered me to have wasted your time searching that up. I think some people will like it, some people won't. Anyway, that's been how to implement remote validation using jQuery, the jQuery validation plugin. I love it. Hopefully you guys enjoy it as much as I do.